briefing. Thank you very much, Senator Roberts. And Senator Ludlam, you have the last word for this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just here to put a couple of questions to you regarding WA. Um, I think it's 2015, the Western Australian Government dissolved the independent market operator and operations of the Western Australian at least Southwest Grid passed to AEMO. Is there anybody, I understand that AEMO is not in the room, but is there anybody here who's happy to speak for them tonight? So no one can speak for AEMO, but, but if you have questions, we may be able to answer it, or we okay. may have to take it on notice you can pass some stuff and go back, back to, to AEMO. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Um, I'm gonna refer to a document that I'm not expecting that you've got with you at the table, but just for reference, it's published June 2016. It's AEMO's deferred 2015 electricity statement of opportunities for the wholesale electricity market. Bit of a mouthful. Um, you're familiar with these publications? They're kind of- Statement of opportunities. Yes, you are. Yes, this is good. Yes. Yep. That's right. Uh, and on page 19, and again, I've got this and you don't, so sorry about that. Um, there's a list of Western Australian generators. Table. You're not going to need this in front of you because I'm just going to ask you to take a couple of questions on notice. It's table number seven, page 19 of the report. And what it does is it goes to this interesting mechanism of the um, this thing called capacity credits. And I understand that that is a thing that's unique to the Western Australian market. That's right, uh, Senator. Okay. I want to get uh, the NEM doesn't have a capacity market like WA does. It's never had one, has it? No. Okay. It's an energy only market. All right. Can you also, I, I just, can you also um, clarify for me if the Commonwealth is responsible for the operation of the market? I'm presuming it's still State Parliament that writes the market rules. So, so the Commonwealth's not responsible for the operation of the market. What does AMO actually do? So AEMO is the operator. Yeah. Uh, AEMO is a private company. Um, That's why we can't bring them in here. I, I'm, I'm sure if you asked them, they would they'd be very happy to come along and, and speak to the committee. Um, uh, so AEMO is a private That's company. True. Its its owners are, I think, 60% government owned, 40% industry owned. Of the government side, uh, the um, the NEM jurisdictions. So that is uh, all jurisdictions other than WA and the NT, yeah. I think we all have equal share, equal voting rights. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that, that's represented by the Energy Council. Uh, and then AEMO has, a, uh, has directors, so it operates like a, um, a company, yeah. uh, has a board of directors, a chair, and the chair appoints the management, um, and the shareholders will appoint the uh, board. Okay, that is great. Uh, so the closest analogue that's, and as you can tell, I'm probably a little bit outside of my area, but the closest analogue I can think of is probably NBN Co. It's got a couple of shareholder ministers, it's a private company, we can still bring them in for estimates. And it's, it's... Uh, so the other thing with... No, no, no. No, because it's... I don't want to get too hung up on this. I feel like I probably have already... It's a Commonwealth, NBN Co. It's a Commonwealth, you mean the Commonwealth Government. In this case, we're talking about the Commonwealth all, pretty much all the states yeah. uh, and 40% the private sector. So the, the companies, the private companies yeah. involved. Yeah. All right. So that's the market operator. I'm still keen to know who writes the rules. I'm presuming that it's state parliament. If they wanted to abolish this capacity credit mechanism, it doesn't come through this parliament, it comes through the West Australian. Yeah, so the West Australian. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, um, sorry, Senator. Yeah, go ahead. They've also got an independent rule change panel. So there's a law which is obviously with the WA prime, um, Parliament, but then an independent rule panel who dictates the rules underneath for WA. Okay, yep. that is really useful, thank you. But you're aware of this capacity credit thing and also that it's unique to the Western Australian market, so that's helpful. Um, part of the purpose of this mechanism is basically you pay people to exist in case you need them. That's, the, that's correct. That's the general that's thing. The capacity market, yep. How does the NEM, which is like 10 times the capacity of the Southwest market, how does that survive without the ability to keep? power stations on standby in that way. How does, how does the NEM keep the lights on without a capacity mechanism like this? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's run very well. Um, the other thing is there is, uh, at any point in time, except for those periods of extreme peak demand, there is typically more generation capacity in the NEM than there is, um, uh, so there's more supply than there is demand. Uh, when it comes to those uh, rare but extreme events, um, then it's a situation where the operator seeing that coming has to make sure that 
all power stations who can produce uh, are producing, and then may also have to take action to ask people to, um, uh, like happened in New South Wales earlier this year, yep. um, to say to people, look, can you please not turn up your air conditioner so high, uh, and we'll do that through either itself or and, and through governments. Okay. Look, you can, WA has substantial network overcapacity as well, and it has for years, so I presume you can see where I'm going. Um, in Western Australia, the reason I referenced that table, table seven, page 19 of that document that I pointed out to you before, there's four power stations on there owned by a company called Tesla Generation, not the, uh, not the Elon Musk thing, but a, a local, local company, I think, Tesla Corporation, that didn't operate at all um, in the 2014-15 financial year and weren't asked to switch on once as far as this table is concerned. But they were, um, I'm informed, paid five million bucks to just be there just in case. Just in case. And what I'm hearing from you is that the NEM is able to run without paying people to not switch on. That's correct. Okay. So far. So far, how do you mean so far? Well, so far it's, um, it's operated reliably. Um, certainly the, um, the work that um, uh, Dr Finkel and his panel are going through, yeah. the issue of capacity markets has been discussed in that context. Um, certainly countries overseas, a number of countries um, utilise capacity markets um, and that is um, something that has been, it's in the sort of the energy world where people discuss these things, that's one of the um, constant debates that's gone on in Australia as far as the NEM goes, like, should there be a capacity market? And I think the consensus so far has been not to have one. Yeah, please God, no. So we've got a market in Western Australia that is dramatically over capacity where we're paying people not to switch on, which seems a little bit counterintuitive, just the gentlest way I can put oh, it. Sorry, Senator, I don't think you're, just to be um, uh, clear, you're not paying them not to switch on, you're paying them to be there in case you need, right. to need yeah. them to switch on. Okay, so can we get to the part, I need to ask you to take some stuff on notice, recognising that you're very unlikely to have this with you at the table. For the listed companies on page 19, which is just basically a rundown of, it must be every generator over a certain size on the Southwest network. Can you please find for us on notice, not by the day after tomorrow, because I suspect this can take a little bit of time, or just point to where we can find this ourselves. Um, for how many hours each of these generators ran for financial years going back to 2010-11? So I know that this is a little bit of a steep ask. Mm -hmm. It's about 20 generators or 25 generators listed on, on the um, table. And how much they were paid, how much they received. I've, the table that I'm reading from gives me a megawatt figure and it also gives me a share of capacity credit figure, but it doesn't actually tell me how much was forked out or for how long these power stations ran. And I guess in a really hot peak, you might get somebody that has to run for 15 minutes or whatever. Um, is that reasonably clear what I'm, what I'm seeking? We'll, we'll take that on notice. It, it may be something that those, that material is not available to us, but we will do what we can. As far as I can tell us. And, yeah. and uh, the previous, the, op, the, Independence is yeah, the yeah. group that was there before AEMO. So yeah. we'll endeavor to do what we can. I appreciate that. If it's already open, source, then apologies, but we've not been able to find anything that, that tells us that. But specifically, and maybe this is something that we can send to Dr Finkel as a warning against others to not go down the track that we've gone. Um, thank you for that. My final question is, this is something that's starting to show up in, um, I don't know, supply and demand curves in Western Australia, and I presume it's the same on the national network. Solar photovoltaics distributed installation is now at the scale where the sort of afternoon peak that used to exist is flattening out or it's being pushed a bit later in the afternoon. In some instances, it's actually turning into a dip. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether anybody at the table or anybody you can point us to is doing any modelling across the country on at what point that starts making baseload generators completely non-viable when that kind of gouge falls to zero and you've just got to turn these base load units off for a spell. Because that's on its way. It's probably closer than we think. But what do your experts tell you about how far off that is? Could we take that on notice? 
Uh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, do you... Just, just so be clear, that's something that AMO, the market operator and the AMC uh, have done considerable amount of work on, and so to come back with a, um, you know, a, a useful, accurate response, yes. uh, we would need to speak with them. Okay. Uh, you don't contest the basic proposition, though, that that's, we might argue about how far off it is before that becomes a significant problem, but that that is going to be a significant problem for base load generators that just like to run flat out. Oh, I think the that the dip that you referred to is... There's probably is, a name for it. But it's a duck bill. The, 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 duck, the duck curve? I knew yes. there'd be something. Yes. Yeah, there is a day, and so people, people um, uh, speak of that as, as an issue that needs to be uh, understood and, and grappled with, so... Yes. Um, if you yes. give us, yeah, time, how, how much longer before the writing is very seriously on the wall for all the baseload power providers? Thank you very much for your time and your expertise, Chair. Yeah,